water would be swamped. And they were right. Americans pour in daily, not in families, but in large bodies. The leading gentlemen, when not talking of tobacco and cotton, find it very amusing to abuse and ridicule French morals, French manners, and French houses. Even the public ballroom, where Creoles and Americans came together for entertainment, degenerated into what Claiborne called a theater of disorder. A fracas originated in a contest between some young Americans and Frenchmen. Thirty Americans and Frenchmen scuffled with each other. It was an infernal melee. But drunken brawls weren't the only threat that required Governor Claiborne's vigilance. Long after Governor Claiborne assumed control, Spanish troops lingered in Louisiana, raising the American suspicions. Spain had been careful enough to get Louisiana to use it as a buffer to keep the Americans away from the silver mines of Mexico. It makes a lot of sense that the Spanish did not want to see this buffer state um, surrendered. With Texas to the west and Florida to the east, Louisiana was surrounded by Spanish territory. Rumors of conspiracy spread throughout Louisiana like a summer fever. Tensions ran high. Then in 1810, the first shots of a small revolution were fired. I yesterday returned from St. Francisville, a little town in the Spanish territory, where I found the whole country in a state of rebellion. Anglo-Americans had been pouring into Baton Rouge and lands east of the Mississippi, all part of Spanish Florida at that time. On September 23rd, Philemon Thomas led a small force of Americans from St. Francisville. They marched on Baton Rouge, overthrew the Spanish fort, which is not difficult to do. Like you can visualize it was sort of a sleepy place. I think one person was killed and two wounded. But they then established the Republic of West Florida. These so-called Florida parishes declared their independence from Spain and raised a flag over Baton Rouge bearing a lone star. And suddenly these now independent parishes join with the uh, part of Louisiana that was bought in the purchase and, uh, and become part of the state of Louisiana in 1812. In time, treaties would establish Louisiana's present borders at the Pearl River in the east and at the Sabine in the west. But even more than the threats from outside, it was the growing storm within her borders that would prove most ruinous to Louisiana.